Hi. Whenever we do social science, we're always using theory in some capacity. So what I want to talk about now is the role of theory in your project. Apologies for the tacky clip up, but the point of using it is to demonstrate the theory isn't just one theory. It's always going to be made up of lots of different concepts, lots of different models, lots of different terms, and also lots of different ideas. And that's also true with how you're using theory, because often you might not be taking just one theory, but you'll be using different aspects of different theories, bringing them together into a coherent whole. So how do we do that? OK, well, firstly, this is me, Michael Strange. I'm part of the Department of Society and Globalization at Roskiller University in Denmark. And if you want to email me, which you're welcome to do, of course, it's mstrand at rook.dk. OK, so theory ultimately is a tool. It's, it's a penknife. It's containing all the different mechanisms through which you are going to turn your research problem into something you can think about academically. OK, so firstly then, if we take it as a tool, as a tool, it's a response to the research problem. That research problem is going to be described through um, particular terms, of course, you're then going to be developing those terms. You're going to be developing those issues through your theory, also showing the field in which your problem is situated. Secondly, a theory contains concepts. It contains models, models for turning an otherwise incredibly complicated world. The world's, of course, a very big thing. So we have to find ways of making it simpler, narrowing down taking out the aspects which we see to be most relevant. So how do we do that? As said, we use models, we use concepts. Those concepts, those models, as you work through them in your theore theoretical discussion, you're beginning to produce the backbone of your methodology. This is where you're producing the how to do of your project. You know, how am I going to do this pragmatically? Also, theory tells you, how do you read your empirical data? Your data doesn't just tell you things straight off. You have to read it in a certain way. You have to see um, what do the different measures indicate. But also, of course, you're having to produce those measures in the first place. All of that is going to be based on concepts, models, uh, points of comparison. So that comes from theory. And point number four. Theory frames your conclusions. You have certain conclusions about your data, but in terms of moving from the point of your ideas about what your project shows you to actually expressing that in language, turning that into a nice, concise conclusion that summarizes your research, that's going to be via theory. You know, you're going to be, this is where you can frame your research conclusions. Fifth, Theory is not a textbook. You're not presenting the definitive account of this theory. Instead, you are providing theory in your project to the extent that it responds to your research problem. Again, it's a tool that deals with your research problem. So it's not a textbook. And also, of course, you have to argue then why and how you use it. You have to show why the theory that you use is relevant. Why do you choose this theory? Why do you choose to combine multiple theories, different concepts, different models? And also, how do you intend to use it? What, in what uh, theoretical academic context is this theory situated for your project? And also, different theories have different consequences, of course, both for um, the meaning of your data, what you're able to find, what you're able to state in your conclusions. Um, and when, you're being, when your work is being read, people are looking to see that you understand the consequences of theory, that you understand the social scientific consequences of your choices. OK, so what kind of questions are you going to ask when you are selecting between different theories? What's going on in your mind? Well, the first question, of course, is what variables does the theory acknowledge? Different theories have different understandings of the world. They put weight on different aspects of the world. So which aspects are most relevant to this theory? Which aspects are you going to be talking about because you've chosen this theory? That's important. Also, of course, 
in terms of also which variables, also which actors, who has power, who has agency, the ability to, to perform actions in the field that you're studying, in the empirical field that you're studying. Is it nation states? Is it maybe non-state actors like NGOs, private firms, maybe international organizations, international financial institutions? Um, what about individuals? Do I matter in global politics? Does the theory mean, does the theory help uh, explain maybe why individuals sometimes might matter in our accounts of something like global politics? A third question you need to ask, of course, is the concept of causality, whether or not causality is within the theory. How does your theory respond to causality? It depends, of course, on your project, how relevant this question is. Sometimes it's not relevant, but other times it really might matter. Um, you know, do you, are you able to say that this factor caused this factor, this variable caused this variable to change? That you have independent and dependent variables? Or instead, is it more that you're understanding the sort of the historical context of some kind of phenomena? Um, that maybe if you're in a perspective which doesn't like causality, then of course you can't make those causal claims. Also, does your theory or the theories that you're using, do they suggest you can explain or understand the world? Again, are you trying to produce a definitive explanation of what's happened? Are you trying to produce a definitive map of this field that you're studying? Or instead, do you have to take a less kind of um, ambitious claim and say, say instead, you're trying to in, inform and develop understanding of this world? And also, prediction. Does your theory suggest you can predict whether it can, whether you can predict within the theory or not, whether or not the theory argues you can predict or whether you can't? Of course, it has massive implications for your research strategy because Will, will you be doing then prediction within your, th within your conclusions? Okay, so what does theory look like? Well, normally when we talk about theory, we think of the big grand theories, liberalism, realism, social constructivism, etc. But we're not just talking about the grand theories here because if theory is there to be a tool for your project, it has to be related to your research problem. So. It's about the literature that's relevant to your problem field. You look to your research problem. How have other people dealt with this research problem? If they haven't dealt with your specific research problem because your problem's too narrow, what about the broader field in which your problem's situated? What concepts, what models do people use when they try and do similar research to your own? That's gonna give you ideas about the concepts and models you can use. You know, so that's, that's theory, concepts and models. You have to look for that to see how people produced their different measurements, their quantitative, qualitative evaluations, understandings of the world. How do they do that? How will you do that? And also, of course, if you do want to bring in general theories, that's fine, but it, it has to be relevant. You have to be able to argue that relevance. You have to argue that this theory is relevant to my problem because of these, this and this reason. Okay, and also, okay, again, it has to be argued. Okay, so when does theory appear within your text? Well, normally you think about it as uh, your, your project, um, particularly if you're doing um, a, a university project, you have um, a theory section or maybe a literature review. Maybe, uh, alternatively, it'll be titled um, with something that's much more relevant to the empirical field in which you're working, so you know the United Nations and security, something like that. Um, so a chapter, or maybe more than one chapter, that appears between the introduction and the methodology, because again, the theory is what informs the methodology. But having said that, it, theory is there at the beginning, actually, because when you are writing your research problem, when you're thinking about your research problem, even before you put pen to paper, you are using concepts, you're using a particular language, and that's always gonna have a theoretical context. So, of course, sometimes um, it, it's not relevant to talk about the theory right at the very beginning of your project, but at least you should be aware of it because that's gonna give you the material that you can use later on when you do talk about the theory. It's gonna give you, it's gonna help make the writing process much, much easier if you think through what is the theory that's informing 
my problem. Okay, and as said, it's implicit within your problem. Okay, well, the last point is, of course, having read through, having discussed through all of that about the value of theory and how to use theory in your projects, just remember also to have fun with your paper because it's possibly the only time in your lives when you get to deal with this specific research problem. So, you know, enjoy it. And as I said, you're also welcome to contact me. Thank you.